morning, everyone. It's great to have you here at Wesley Uniting Church. We're really hoping that you're recovering from this uh, pandemic. I wish to acknowledge the custodians of the land, the Wajak people of the Noongar Nation, and their elders past and present. I acknowledge and respect their continuing culture and the contribution they make in the life of this city and this region. And Christ is with us. So I light the candle to bring the light of Christ into our presence. And I open the Bible, the Bible that guides us and leads us through our lives and tells us the story of our ancestors. Here we see the richness of God's love made real in the gifts of friendship, grace, food, and faith. God's presence keeps us going and gives us more than we need. Come closer, search deeply, expect to receive daily bread, and then some. God makes a place for all and gives to all with generous abundance. Let us live with hope and trust in God and worship abundantly.
Let us pray. Aware of our longings, we sometimes wonder, will there be enough? Will our deepest hungers be satisfied? Will we receive enough to survive? O oh God, calm our anxious spirits, fill us with your sustaining presence, and satisfy us with your enduring love. May we feast on the goodness you provide, so we can overflow with your presence in our world. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 21, verses 8 to 21. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bowshot. For she said, do not let me look on the death of the child. And she sat opposite him. She lifted up her voice and wept, and God heard the voice of the boy. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We thank you, God, for every good thing in which we have participated. We thank you today that we are able to celebrate the birthday of the Uniting Church in Australia, 45 years ago tomorrow. Thanks for the courage we have been able to show under duress, the patience we have mustered for our prickly neighbour, the kindness we have shown to a stranger. Thanks for the time we have given to others, the skills we have made available without any thought of any reward. Thanks for the affirmation we give to friends and the help we are ready to offer to strangers. We thank you, most wonderful God, that your grace in us has not been in vain. For every measure of light and love and peace that we have been able to share, we give you thanks and praise. Holy God, we are grateful that you love us and call us to a life of boundless opportunities and unmeasured joys. Yet around us in this world, we see a desperate search for happiness in all the wrong places. We acknowledge that we have allowed ourselves to become caught up in the world's busy futility. Loving God, we turn to you 
for the spiritual blessing that is in short supply. We are the lost who need a rescuer, the sick who need a physician, the offenders who need forgiveness. Most gracious God, please have mercy on us and upon this wide world for whom Christ Jesus died. In his name we pray. Amen. It is written of Christ, in him we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace which he has lavished upon us. Now that really is good news. Believe it, trust it, and be free of shame and anxiety. We are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Reading from the Christian tradition, Romans 6, chapter 6, verses 1b to 11. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like this. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Our second reading from the Christian tradition is Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 to 39. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear for them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. 
Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Lord, may your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, loving God. Amen. A child and its mother banished to the desert. Here is a shocking story of human jealousy and callousness. Two little boys are happily playing together. The younger one is Isaac, the son of Abraham, and his chief wife, Sarah. The older child is Ishmael, son of Abraham, and a secondary wife named Hagar, a woman of another tribe who first came into Abraham's household as a slave. Sarah, mother of Isaac, is jealous of her son's half-brother, who is a potential rival. The jealousy boils up within her until it cannot be contained. She goes to her husband, Abraham, and nags, throw out this child of a slave woman. He has no right to be seen as your heir along with my son, Isaac. Abraham was not happy with Sarah's jealousy, but after some prayer, he took Hagar and Ishmael, gave them some bread and a water bag, and sent them away into the desert. By all our common humanitarian values, this is obviously an outrage. No wonder the critics of the Old Testament enjoy this story and try to make us writhe with embarrassment. Here, the great man of faith, Abraham, sends one of his wives and her small son off into the desert with only a bag of water and some bread. Is this the kind of God we believe in? A God who allows such injustice to happen? Yes, indeed. Ours is the world where it's easy to picture a man and child being given some bread and water and expelled out into the desert. But to read of it perpetuated by Sarah and Abraham, the great mother and father of God's chosen race, seems almost obscene. However, we'd best come to terms with it. God does not have perfect people with whom to work, just sinners. The church over the centuries has been involved in both racism and brutality, in bringing great and complex purposes to fruition. God has to work with extremely flawed material, yet God chooses to still call and use people like us. Returning to Abraham and Sarah, the providential love of God shines out even against this ugly background of jealousy and callousness, a scene of grave injustice. There is gut-wrenching pathos in what happened to the child Ishmael. Hagar went and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water was all gone, she placed the child under one of the bushes. She then went away and sat down opposite him about the distance of an arrow shot from a bow. For she said, I cannot bear to watch a dying child. As she sat there opposite him, the child loudly cried and wept. What mother among you cannot feel the distress of little Ishmael and the deep anguish of his mother Hagar? But a most beautiful part of a story then unfolds. God heard the voice of a child and the angel of God spoke to Hagar from the heavens. Don't grieve so deeply, Hagar. Don't be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Get up. Go and pick the child up and hold him in your arms, 
for God will make him a great nation. And then God enabled Hagar to see a well of water, and she went and filled the water bag and gave the child a drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew up there in the wilderness and became an expert hunter with his bow and arrow. Now God heard the voice of a child. That's it. Yes, 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 God heard. Here we have a glimpse of a God to whom all lives are precious, a God who hears the voice of one little Arab child dying of thirst out in the desert near Beersheba. Forget Abraham's fault and forget Sarah with her cruel jealousy. Focus on the God in this story who refuses to accept that the life of one child does not matter. This is the same God who calls a shepherd youth named David to be the king of Israel. Now God heard the voice of a child. Jesus is the supreme revelation of this God. His God is one who cares for every single person and who will suffer to save and heal them. Jesus did not answer the age-old question, why do so many people, innocent people, including little children, suffer and die prematurely? Why does God allow this to happen? His message was to assure us that God did care, did feel in the divine heart the pain of every fall and the grief of every death. The God of Jesus cares about every human being, suffers for every human being, and plans for the ultimate joy of every human being who will accept the love that is offered. The ancient story of Ishmael sent away with his mother into the desert with only some bread and water. It's like a forward to the gospel of Jesus who proclaims God's love for one sheep, one lost coin, one lost son. God heard the voice of a child. Let's move from ancient deserts to the contemporary land down under. Our Australian outback has many desert places similar to the wilderness in the region of Beersheba. At night, you can feel the sense of elemental silence. You can imagine you are alone in the whole universe. Who out there under the everlasting stars would hear the cry of one small child? The answer is God, the God of Jesus Christ. No human cry is unheard. There is no tragedy that is not suffered by God and taken by the wounded hands of Christ to be woven into a fine tapestry of beauty and joy of love and love. Even the strongest and wisest and most elderly among us are just the vulnerable little children of God. With all my heart, I declare, I believe, and declare to you, God hears the voice of the child. Amen.
prayers of intercession. <clears throat> Holy God, though this world depends on your grace, it is governed and attended by mortals. So we pray for those who walk the corridors of power in the parliaments of this and other lands, whose judgments we value or fear. May they always consider those they represent, make decisions with courage and integrity, and resist any temptation to abuse the trust placed in them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who hold key positions in the world of finance, business, and industry, whose, position, whose decisions will impact the lives of others. May they always value humanity and people ahead of themselves. May they never impose burdens on the poor which they would never carry themselves. And may they never divorce money from morality or ownership from stewardship. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those in caring professions who look after the, the kind and listen to the miserable and the cantankerous folk. And for those who make decisions regarding the nation's health and welfare, especially during this time of the coronavirus, may they always sense the sanctity of life and every person's uniqueness. May they help and heal by their interest as well as their skill, and may they be saved from tiredness and an excess of demands. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And let us remember those for whom we are responsible and to whom we are accountable in what we do today. May we show to them the thoughtfulness, tolerance, and kindness of Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, hear our prayers. And if today we might be the means by which you answer the prayers of others, then may you find us neither deaf nor defiant, but keen to fulfill your purpose for Jesus' sake. We pray all these prayers in the name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Same us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
from where we are to where you need us, Jesus, now lead on. From the security of what we know to the adventure of what you will reveal, Jesus, now lead on. To refashion the fabric of this world until it resembles the shape of your kingdom, Jesus, now lead on. Because good things have been prepared for those who love God, Jesus, now lead on. And the blessing of God, the triune God, be upon each one of you today and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>